Hello students. So till now we have learned that uh, the narrator Mr. Dhanda feels so bad and sorry for the family means for Mr. and Mrs. Bhandari and their little daughter Pramodini and that is why he suggested a plan to them. Okay, his plan was, uh, what was his plan? His plan was to give some cheats or typed letters to the guest which will inform them uh, about Pramodini that she is deaf and dumb and letters uh, and like these letters will also uh, ask the visitors or the guest to not try to be friendly with Pramodini too soon as it may hurt her right and we know students that uh, this plan of uh, the narrator worked very well it saved the little girl pramodini from getting hurt every day and so we know that now mr and mrs bhandari were relieved they were somewhat happy for the little child pramodini now but they had a strange visitor one day so here the narrator mr dhanda is saying that there came a strange guest one day okay in the resort it was late in the afternoon and i was talking to the landlord about some packed lunch that i needed the next day i was planning a short excursion by myself to a group of caves nearby the landlord was in a hurry arranging things for a new guest who had booked a room for the season and was supposed to be moving in any moment arriving by the mail train so now students here the narrator says that one afternoon when he was talking with the landlord about the food he needed the next day as uh, he was planning to go and see some caves which were near the resort. So the narrator says that he saw the landlord arranging things for a new guest. Okay, The new guest who was about to visit the resort uh, had already booked a room in the resort and he was about to reach the resort at any time because the narrator says that the new guest was uh, coming to the resort by a fast train or he was traveling through a um, fast train. So uh, as the landlord was arranging things for the new guest, uh, he was in a hurry okay the landlord was in a hurry because a new guest now is coming to the resort now and sure enough soon a young man came in a porter carrying his luggage he was barely 25 clad in an ill-fitting tweed suit with drooping shoulders and white trouser bottoms because of the journey he looked untidy his hair his necktie his shoes all unkempt and needing attention but he had a cheerful face and jet black eyes sparkling with vitality so now the narrator says that uh, the new guest finally arrived okay so he was a young man and the porter means uh, a person whose duty is to carry luggage of the people in railway station airport hotel or market okay so the porter was carrying the luggage of the new guest and now here the narrator describes the new guest the new guest is a young man uh, he is 25 years old he is wearing a non-fitting tweeted suit meaning the suit was not uh, exactly of his own size and had a rough surface okay and uh, he was wearing trousers as well and because he had traveled a long journey he looked untidy his hair necktie and his shoes everything was messy and untidy they were uh, these things were not neat but despite of his attire means despite of what he was wearing and uh, despite of how untidy the new guest looked the narrator says that the new guest had a very cheerful or kind of a happy face and uh, the color of his eyes was pure black or dark brown and it seemed that his eyes were full of vitality means full of life or full of energy or full of uh, passion now mr bhandari stepped forward and asked 
Mr. David, I presume? The young man looked closely at his face, smiled and nodded. Room number 18, please. Everything is ready. The young man again looked at him, smiled and nodded. He paid the porter who bowed low for he was not asked to return the change and disappeared. The young man gave me a brief friendly look and sat before a huge book which the landlord had pushed before him making the necessary entries about himself and his intended stay. So now students, here Mr. Bhandari welcomes the new guest and asks him if he was Mr. David. And yes, now we know that the new guest is none other than Mr. David. Then again, Mr. Bhandari tells Mr. David that the room which has been provided to Mr. David for his stay is room number 18 okay and tells that the room is totally ready then uh, mr david the new guest looked at mr bhandari and just smiled and just nodded to whatever mr bhandari was saying and after that mr david uh, gave money to the porter he paid the porter who who was uh, carried his, carrying his luggage who carried his luggage to the resort Mr. David did not even ask the porter to return the change and the porter left from there, okay? He bowed low uh, uh, to show respect to Mr. David as he did not ask the porter to return the change, okay? So, Mr. David also looked at the narrator. Now, the narrator says that Mr. David also looked at him and gave him to a friendly look or a kind of a friendly smile. And then he sat there and Mr. Bhandari started uh, doing whatever he had to do to uh, allow the guest, allow the new guest, Mr. David, to go to his room. Now, at this time, he discovered the sealed envelope containing the typed cheat lying on the table addressed to him by name. He took the cover and tore it open. This coincided with the entry of the landlady into the room. She hurriedly asked her husband if this was the new guest and having received confirmation, came forward and shook hands with the young man. So now what happened students? When the new guest Mr. David was sitting there while uh, Mr. Bhandari was arranging everything for Mr. David's entry, Mr. David got that uh, typed cheat which was there on the table and which was kept there for him from Mr. and Mrs. Bhandari. And now can you remember the, uh, can you remember the cheat? Can you remember what was that? This cheat is the one which the narrator asks the parents to give to every guest who visit the resort and which tells about their uh, daughter that she is dumb and deaf. And this cheat is the one on which it is written for the visitors or the guest that uh, they should not try to talk to Mr. and Mrs. Bhandari's daughter very soon. So now, as Mr. David was a new guest, a cheat for him was also kept there on the table, okay? And he saw it, finally. He took it and was about to open it. But then, Mrs. Bhandari came there, okay? She asked her husband, Mr. Bhandari, if uh, the new guest was Mr. David. And uh, yes, she was confirmed by her husband that yes, this, uh, the guest sitting there is, the new guest sitting there is none other than Mr. David. And when she is uh, confirmed about Mr. David, she uh, came forward, she came forward, uh, she came near Mr. David, the new guest, and she shook hands with, uh, with him, okay? Now, did you have a nice journey, Mr. David? She asked with her sweet smile. Uh, so here students, Mrs. Bhandari asks Mr. David whether he had a nice journey or not or if he had to face any trouble coming to the resort, okay? So the young man smiled and nodded nonchalantly as if to say, well, neither very pleasant nor very unpleasant. So uh, here it is given that the new guest did not say anything to answer to Mrs. Bhandari's question, okay? He did not speak. He just simply smiled and nodded nonchalantly. Means 
he smiled and nodded in a calm and relaxed way okay and it seemed as if the new guest wanted to say that uh, he had a journey which was neither too good nor too bad okay would you like to have a hot bath immediately or tea first the young man pursed his lips and shrugged his shoulders obviously implying that one would be as good as the other and that he had no preferences so uh he smiled and nodded uh, nodded to the question of uh mrs question asked by mrs bhandari then uh, then mrs bhandari again asked mr david if he wanted to take a hot bath first or he would like to have a uh, or he would like to have tea first okay but then what did the young man or uh, the new guest mr david do what did he do or what did he reply he said nothing okay he said nothing instead he made a gesture gesture means when you don't uh, speak anything but uh, you try to talk to uh, uh, but then you uh, try to talk to say something uh, like uh, with the help of signals okay you try to communicate with the help of signals or you make movements by hand your hand your head and so on okay so these these are called gestures the these bodily movements are called gestures through which you can communicate to other people through which you can uh, you can make a person understand what you are saying what or what you want to say so mr david also did that mr david did not speak a word did not did not he did not speak anything he did not utter a single word but instead he showed a gesture now what was that gesture mr david pursed his lips and shrugged his shoulders means he made a gesture or a uh, movement by his lips and shoulders as if he was trying to say that uh, he had no preferences means he will be okay with whatever he, uh, whatever is provided to him at first he will be okay if he gets the tea first and he will also be okay if he can get a hot bath first so he had no preferences at all okay he did not choose tea over uh, a hot bath and he also did not choose a hot bath over uh, a cup of tea so he did not give priority to anyone any any anyone okay any one of them and he did not utter uh, he did not utter a single word so for the uh, so from the very beginning students we have been noticing that uh, mr david the new guest is not speaking anything is not replying to anyone is not replying to anything in words he he did not speak okay he he is just uh, smiling and nodding and try trying to you know trying to communicate with gestures or uh, his bodily movements he is trying to communicate with only with his bodily movements he was not uh, uttering a single word okay now both the land landlord and the landlady were by now slightly disconcerted by what they inferred to be their guest's pride and arrogance disconcerted means confused okay um pride and arrogance since he had not even deigned to reply adequately to their polite enquiries so now students as mr david was not saying anything he was not say uh, he was not replying anything mr and mrs bhandari became a little confused they thought that how arrogant mr david was they thought that uh, it was mr uh, it was mr david's pride uh, pride in himself and his arrogance because of which he did not want to uh, talk to mr and mrs bhandari okay so mr and mrs bhandari thought that uh, mr david uh, was not a, a nice kind of a person and he was not a polite kind of a person uh, but instead uh, they thought that mr david was a rude kind of a person was arrogant kind of a person okay so students we will uh, we will stop uh, we will stop here for now and we will continue the further chapter in the next session and if you have any doubt till where we have uh, read and discussed you can directly message me on whatsapp and i will definitely try to sort it out okay thank you